Today is Monday, December 19th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. Today's guests are Mark Stoderberg, ADMIS Senior Ag Analyst, and Alan Bush, ADMIS Senior Financial Economist. Starting with the financials this morning, Alan, we've heard that the Fed is happy to see lower stock market valuations. Why is that? Well, uh, first of all, anytime the stock market increases, it is considered to be inflationary. Of course, uh, higher indices or higher stocks means there's more money available to be spent on whatever consumer goods, uh, real estate. But when the stock market comes under pressure, there's less money available in theory. So that would be deflationary. And I think that is what the, the Fed would like to see. So it was just. Last week that we saw a major breakout to the upside that lasted uh, actually less than one day. And the Fed came in with their hawkish statement, driving prices lower. So the the Fed very much uh, is is happy to see a lower stock market. And I think from time to time when the stock market does perform well, I think you can count on the Fed uh, probably coming in with some uh, bearish or hawkish comments to tap down the exuberance, so to speak, if, when there are gains in the indices. You know, did the dollar make new lows last week despite hawkish Federal Reserve policy statements? Yes, yes, it did. And that was uh, quite a surprise to see new lows for the move in the dollar. Uh, you would consider the uh, the Fed statement uh, sh- should have been bullish for the dollar index, meaning higher interest rates, higher interest rates means a stronger dollar. And yet the dollar actually closed lower that day. so. The rule of thumb is anytime a market trades lower on bullish news, that should be considered to be a sign of weakness. Of course, since then, the dollar has firmed a little bit, uh, it's it's lower today. So nothing has really changed. I I think the dollar will continue to decline. And the recent lows that we saw from last week, I think, will be taken out, of course, to the downside in the next couple of weeks. Alan, I ask you to put your technical hat on here for a moment. What are the charts saying about the interest rate futures right now? Well, despite all of the Fed hawkishness, the charts look rather constructive. In fact, we uh, had some lows in October and also in early November in uh, the the interest rate futures markets. In in fact, it was the Fed funds rate uh, futures that actually had a one-day reversal to the upside. So we are substantially off of those lows, especially in the 30-year Treasury bond futures. Uh, in fact, 12 full, full points off of the lows. Uh, of course, now price is a little bit lower today, but the technicals are improving, and I think the fundamentals will soon follow uh, suit as well and, and improve. So still thinking that we have seen the lows across the yield curve for futures and higher prices are likely. Mark, let's talk big picture here. What macro events will drive agricultural prices in 2023? Uh, Well, really three, I think, come to mind. Weather, first and foremost. Uh, Right now, all the focus is on South America. Uh, We're experiencing drought patterns in southern parts of Brazil uh, and throughout much of Argentina. Uh, I think that that will shift eventually to the U.S. here at the beginning of the second quarter when we get into the U.S. planning season and, and then the growing season after that. Uh, second big big item, we'll, we'll be continuing to watch the war. Uh, with you. Will Ukraine still be able to export grain out of the Black Sea or will a Russian uh, missile strike prevent that? Uh, how much of the crop will they be able to plant here in this uh, upcoming 2023 season as well? Or some early forecasts this week already suggesting uh, to expect another big drop in acres and in production. 34 million metric tons is a figure that I've seen uh, thrown out this morning. That's down 37% from, from uh, 2022, and that's down about 60% from what we saw pre-invasion in 2021. And then lastly, just the global economy. Will these uh, higher interest rates that, uh, that Alan has alluded to, is that going to be a drag on the global economy? Uh, if so, how severe will that drag be, and what impact will it have uh, on commodity demand. Uh, will China finally be able to uh, recover 
economically from their zero COVID policies sometime later in 2023, or might that be kicked back to 2024? So these are really some of the, the, the three main events that we'll be monitoring closely here as we shift into 2023. Mark, looking at the money flow, how are the index funds currently positioned in the ag markets? It's been a very active year for index funds in the agricultural space. Uh, the main theme all year really has been an inverse relationship uh, between interest rates and their exposure to the agricultural markets. Uh, early this year, 21, uh, 22, uh, when it was becoming increasingly clear that the Federal Reserve was falling behind the inflationary curve, index funds were pouring uh, large amounts of assets into the agricultural space really as a hedge against inflation. Uh, these positions uh, peaked in the early part of the year, around uh, early April, at nearly 1.4 million contracts. Once the Fed tightening cycle uh, really kicked in, uh, effectively starting their war on inflation, uh, the index funds began to scale back a bit. At present, index funds are holding about a, a million contracts in the agricultural markets, and that's the lowest position that they've had. Uh, since the summer of 2020. Uh, I suspect this inverse relationship will hold into 2023 as well. Uh, and as we'll expect it now to see interest rates hold at higher levels uh, than currently expected. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised to see index funds continue to shed length in the ag space, possibly down to about 800,000 contracts. That's kind of a cycle wall we saw back in uh, 2019. Mark. In your macro uh, comments, you mentioned weather. What areas of weather are you watching closest between now and year end? Well, really two come to, to, come to mind, stand out the most. Domestically, we're dealing with uh, an Arctic push uh, of extremely cold air coming down from Canada later this week. Lows across much of the northern plains expected to be in this minus 20 to minus 30 degree area, uh, really for several days. Areas up there won't be as uh, impacted as much because they do have some snow cover, uh, but in, in areas around western Kansas, Oklahoma, and the Texas Panhandle, areas that just don't have the snow cover expected to see temperatures in the 10 to 15 degrees below zero. I think that leaves the, call, the crop vulnerable uh, to some winter kill, uh, and that's already on a crop that's sitting in, in, in drought-affected areas, about 70% of the cropland area. And then secondly uh, is the uh, uh, down in Brazil, in southern Brazil and Argentina. Uh, there was some modest relief here this weekend with some rains across Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, Going to be another hot four or five, hot and dry four or five days before expected to shift towards a more seasonal weather pattern and increased rainfall prospects you know, starting this Friday and through the weekend. And then beyond that is, is uh, also expected to see some uh, improved conditions. So you know, this is something that we'll really need to keep a close eye on and monitor because if without uh, these beneficial rains, we're going to start to see some pretty significant production losses, particularly in Argentina. Thank you both. Remember, the views and opinions expressed today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. If you'd like more information about our brokerage services, would like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.